Hi, everybody. Uh, I'll wait for a few more people to join. Um, I'm really, really, really happy to be sharing the end of the season with you guys. Um, really excited and very grateful because it's been a rough year, <laughs> to say the least. And um, it's nice to close it out with our amazing fans. Um, oh, thank you <laughs> for the hair compliment. My brother got on me about my hair today, y'all. He was like giving me all the things, but he's 10 years old. And I think oh, I should be okay. Okay, cool. All right. So I, just send me questions, guys. Um, and I'll answer uh, whatever ones I can without spoiling the end of the season or spoiling next season. Um, and uh, so, yeah. Thank you very much for the compliments. One of the first questions uh, that I got um, when people were started sending me questions that I thought was really great was about how uh, we create like women characters for the show. Um, this is Nina Simone behind me, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and I just really believe in strong women, but I also believe in women um, being complicated characters and not just strong. So I like to make people vulnerable. Um, and so that's cool. Um, okay, so I will get to that in a second. Let me just look at some of these questions. Uh, when is Tommy coming back? You know I'm not going to answer that. Hey, Power TV fans. Uh, will, will Tommy make a guest appearance? As I've said before in print, if someone said that I killed my best friend and I did not kill my best friend, I would want to talk to them about that. Um, is Kane going to live? Uh, how does Kane's behavior lead you to think he may or may not be good knowing the way we do these shows? Oh, one thing I want to clear up. I want to clear up two things that are really important. Kane is absolutely Lorenzo's son, um, and Kane is not named after Kanan. What happened is, and you guys will hear more about this in season two, Kane's birth name is Lorenzo Tejada Jr., and his nickname is Hurricane because as a kid, he used to run around uh, the house so much, they act, he acted like a hurricane. But that will come up more as, um, as you, you get to know the Tommy better. Uh, not Tommy, sorry, get to know the Tejadas better. Okay. Uh, thank you. When can we expect season two, giving no interruptions? So this year, you know, the split was uh, about COVID, right? You know, we, um, we couldn't shoot all the episodes uh, together. We're going to start shooting in early 2021. Hopefully, you know, in uh, God's will, obviously God's will, we, if we are able to shoot consistently. Uh, episodes nine and 10 were shot during COVID and uh, we were very, very fortunate um, to have been careful and uh, protected our cast and crew. Hopefully that will happen again. And uh, we will be able to shoot straight through and then airing. I don't know when they're gonna air um, because we are shooting because of COVID, uh, Raising Canaan and Force and uh, Ghost season two all at the same time. Uh, so um, is Tariq inherently good or bad? It's difficult to tell. I am a big fan of Tariq. You and y'all hated him so much. I didn't understand it because he's just a kid. Um, but I am very, very attached to him. Like I love him so much. And so, uh, I guess I was, um, you know, I don't think he's fundamentally good or bad. I think he is a study of nature versus nurture. I think he was born, um, with a certain personality. He's kind of a quiet kid, kind of a shy kid actually. Uh, and has come out of his shell because he had to. Um, but I don't know that he is either one. I think he's a, he can be a bad person who does good things and he can be a good person who does bad things, just like his dad. You know, that's why, in fact, we've been talking about this a lot, but that's why the main title sequences are pretty much the same with different images because that dual headed, uh, that kind of split, the kaleidoscope split, uh, split for both characters was super important. Uh, let's see, okay. Uh, who supplies the winter coats for Mar Mary and Tariq? Our costume designer, um, a Ghost Season 1, Frank Fleming, who's been with uh, Power since the beginning, and uh, Deshaun Burton is also a costume designer on the show. They do the costumes. They are amazing. Um, Monet Backstory, you're going to get a lot of that in Season 2. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, okay, let's see. Are book two and three going to be running at the same time? We're going to be shooting. Uh, book two and three are going to be shooting at the same time, yes. Did Ghost ever know about the Tejada family? Uh, interesting note. If you guys remember season one, season one, 
Uh, Ghost actually wasn't in the streets much. He was off, he was, he was completely off the board. And we've kind of lined up the timelines in a specific way so that Monet, who's from Brooklyn, doesn't know about Tommy and Ghost, but Lorenzo, as we start to move forward, will start to figure out how much he knows or doesn't know and when he puts together um, who Tariq might actually be. But that's for seasons to come. Um, one thing to note, though, that St. Patrick, James St. Patrick, was able to run for lieutenant governor. So I want to be clear that it's not like everybody knew that James St. Patrick was Ghost. I think sometimes the fans think, oh, they must know, but they don't know because Ghost and James St. Patrick, people didn't know his uh, real name. People didn't know his government who knew him in the street and people who knew him uh, in like the legit world didn't know he was Ghost. Just that's like, if you remember. So that's why it's not um, like, oh, that's Ghost's son when they meet Tariq. Okay, let's see. Okay. Uh, writer's room question how fun is it tossing ideas around it's been really hard this season actually to be honest with you guys um for season two being on zoom has been really tough a writer's room is really like it should be basically like an improv troupe on steroids going back and forth with ideas it's been harder on zoom I'm, I'm sure everyone has had a harder time working on zoom um for those of you who work in like collective working spaces that said we've all had jobs and i cannot stress enough I cannot stress enough how grateful um, I, I am and how grateful I want all the writers that work uh, with me um, to be, you know, for their jobs. Because there's a lot of people, especially people of color like us, who are hurting right now. And uh, that's something that needs to be at the forefront of our minds. Um, okay, let's see. A lot of these are, uh, why doesn't Monet know who Ghost was? I already just answered that. How many seasons are planned? Uh, Laz Alonzo needs a spin-off. Laz Alonzo is a series regular on The Boys. Not that I should be promo promoting other shows, but Laz is too busy to be on a spin-off. Uh, let's see. Where can you purchase the power posters you have in my office? I actually don't know the answer to that, but um, stars.com. Everyone is asking me, is Ghost dead? Y'all, y'all saw him. <laughs> you were at his funeral. I don't know how else to answer that question. Um, what will the dynamic be between Monet and Tasha once she's out of jail? Who said Tasha was getting out of jail? Uh, we will wait. Okay, the cast chemistry is getting better. They all shine. They absolutely do. Can y'all make the next episode seven hours and 30 minutes? I love you, Trevor. Thank you. What was my inspiration behind the Tariq plot? Um, okay, so uh, there is something in literature. Again, I'm always combining kind of our culture and what we do with Western canon and how I was raised kind of Ivy League literature, all that. So there's something called a Bildungsroman, Bildungsroman, which is a coming of age novel. Um, and there's a lot of those in uh, Western culture, just about a young man or a young woman. Um, they didn't do non-binary at the beginning, but I'm sure that's gonna happen now. Um, uh, coming of age. And so I really wanted this season to be in that genre of like, this is a coming of age story. So that by the end that you're really looking at a boy, you really looking are, you really are looking at a boy in episode 101 and that he's starting to make his move toward being a man by we get, by the time we get to 110. That is specifically also, remember he turns in 105, he turns 18. So there's a, like some a specific way that we're doing it. Um, I don't understand why people hate Tariq. Me either. Uh, and now we love Tariq. Get my boy a car, though. We debated this in the, in the writer's room about whether or not he would have access to Tasha's car. And we decided that he never fully got his driver's license. A lot of New Yorkers don't have them. So that's, you know, it is what it is. Uh, okay, let's see. We hated him because all Ghost wanted for him was the best and he just couldn't see that. Oh dear, that is not necessarily true because uh, Ghost wanted the best for himself. Um, what he, what Ghost wanted specifically at the beginning was the best for Tariq and Reyna. But like most, most parents do, including myself, uh, they make decisions for their kids and then they don't realize that's not what the kid needed. Tariq really needed honesty and that was the thing that Ghost would never give him. So that's something that's super important to just uh, talk about. Who will train Tariq in the street game? <clears throat> you are, he's actually been trained by Kanan and Tommy and Ghost and Tasha in different ways. But now Monet is becoming a certain kind of teacher. And hopefully in season two, without giving too much away, he's going to get a couple other ones. 
Um, we now know about the professor's role. That was one of the most fun things this season, watching so many people go, these characters are pointless. I don't know why they're in the show. I don't understand. And I was like, y'all, you know me. You'll figure it out. <laughs> You'll understand why they're in the show. So now I think you're getting uh, to understand why they're in the show. And props to Justin Marcel McManus and Melanie Leibert, who play those characters really beautifully. You guys took a lot of heat this season. Um, but, you know. It is what it is. Tariq is a punk. He needs to pay for what he did to Ghost. He is paying for it as you're watching. Uh, will it be any surprising deaths? Come on, y'all. You know me. Uh, okay. I answered. Does Monet, uh, does Monet know Ghost? I answered that one already. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay. If I had to save one character from a TV death, who would it be and why? One character in my show or a character in somebody else's show? Because uh, I was really mad about Ned Stark and I stopped watching Game of Thrones after season one. I was just angry about it. I wasn't a fan of the books. I came to Game of Thrones and then when they killed Ned Stark, I was like, I'm out. Um, okay, Davis McLean's backstory, who's his wife. Um, Davis McLean, as you're going to see, um, is uh, and Method and I talked about this. He's from Harlem. He's got a brother. Um, he's got some other siblings, uh, and he is married, and I can't tell you who the actress is who's going to play him, but I have a wish. I hope I get her to do it. Uh, can Tariq be with the dark sister, not light skin? Okay, so let's talk about color just in the series. I think this is a great thing to talk about because people bring this stuff up. And um, I just want to tell you from me that my thing is I'm always trying to cast the best actor, First, that is the most important thing. And I am always trying to cast multiple different shades of people because I'll tell you the real truth. When I was growing up, I didn't grow up around people of color at all. Every black person that I knew in my town was pretty much a relative, save one or two people. But when I turned on the TV, especially watching a different world, I saw black people of all shades. And when I came to start to do this, this is really what I wanted to do is put all of us on TV. So um, I will just say that one of the things that made me saddest about the beginning of power is how many people would write or say, well, Ghost would never be with a woman as dark as Tasha. Naturi is one of the most beautiful women in the world, period, period, uh, on God. She is gorgeous, drop dead, stunning. And when people wrote that, I would always be like, that's really, I don't understand that. So Here's the deal. Tariq is attracted to all women of color. And even though uh, maybe it's not clear entirely because we haven't gone into these things, I'm also trying to address some diasporic issues um, by using women who are black and Puerto Rican and mixed in all different kinds of ways. But the skin color of the women that he's attracted to is not is the point is that I'm trying to make is that they are women of color and that they wear their hair. Some of them wear natural and everybody, you know, that I'm trying to make it a, a larger kind of thing about our men ch choosing our women. Uh, if I can make it as, you know, straightforward as possible. That doesn't mean that love, love doesn't know a color. Obviously, you know, I am the product of various race intermixing in my, um, in my background as well. And I'm, you know, I support all love. But I do think it's important, especially for a show that's aimed at younger people, to allow for uh, a person like Tariq to find comfort and beauty in women who look like his mother um, or women who look like his deceased godmother, Lakeisha. Um, so there you go. Um, but Tariq will be with lots of women. <laughs> you haven't met all of them yet. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, thank you for saying I'm a beast. I think that's a compliment. This show has far exceeded my expectations, M. Gladiator says. Never thought I would adjust without Ghost. How many seasons uh, do you think Ghost 2 will have? I appreciate that so much. When people tell me that they were like, I hate Tariq, I didn't think the show was going to be good, and then I watched it and actually was, that is a huge compliment. I will tell you that is not, you guys aren't alone. I had a lot of people tell me that the show would never work. I was told over and over again this show wouldn't work. And I was like, no, we can make this younger. We can make it fresher. We can do a coming of age novel. You know, I look at these shows as books. These are the novels of our age. Like, why would you not try to make this as like elevated and fun and rich as possible? Um, and why would you not move this younger? I mean, that's one of the things, you know, Tommy and Ghost are would probably be if Ghost had lived, they're in their 40s now, like me. 
which doesn't mean that they're not fun and vibrant, but there's another story to tell about younger kids. And so we should be doing that. We should be supporting that. And also I want to hire young actors, give them a start. You know, how spellbinding and amazing is Woody McLean? How amazing is that guy? Like he is beyond like just seeing these young kids and like Michael Rainey, who I've known since I was 11, like just all these kids, Toya, Paige, Lavelle, like they're just so talented. Like, why would we not try to do that? Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, will we get a backstory with Tamika and Sachs? Uh, not really. I mean, I think you guys saw it. You know, we, we saw when she came in and was hired and that's how they know each other. So that's all in, uh, in power. Why did Tariq say goodbye the, the way he did to Tasha like that? I don't know where you're talking about. That. Oh, oh, why did he say goodbye? Because he thought he was going to get um, killed by Monet. And uh, he didn't want to say all that. He wanted not to hurt her. So... What's up with Breeze? Breeze dead, y'all. Breeze dead. Uh, can Power just go to Netflix so I can watch the whole season at once? No. <laughs> uh, Power is going to be on Stars uh, and Stars Play International. Um, let's see. Who is my favorite character? I don't have a favorite character. My favorite character is to write for, I guess. I love writing Monet. That whole scene in episode 109 uh, where Monet like kind of jumped bad at Carrie when she was sitting in Carrie's office at her desk, that was super fun. Um, I love writing. I love writing, period. Uh, although sometimes it's like the hardest job in the world. But I do love writing. And, uh, but I love, God, I love strong characters. And I love characters who are wrong. I really love characters who are wrong. I know some of y'all are like, but he shouldn't be doing that. I'm like, but that's drama. That's conflict. And that's how we are as human beings. I mean, I make mistakes every day. Will Riley end up like Holly? Now, it's been interesting to watch you guys kind of make parallels between different characters. And I admit there are some good structural similarities for sure. And I love watching people pick up on them. But one of the things that I think is interesting is that uh, the Riley character didn't come out of an idea. It came out of an idea. I think I've said this before, but it came out of an idea that came from you guys. Okay, so if you guys remember, there were a bunch of fans who thought Holly was an undercover cop. She was not an undercover cop. However, <laughs> she, uh, I thought that was so interesting. Like, wow, what if that person who was in, you know, Tariq's life was kind of an undercover cop? And that's where the idea for Riley came. Uh, oh, hello. There's an extra Kemp in here. What's up? Okay, let's see. All right. Is Kane Tommy's son? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, let's see. Uh, yes, is there still plans to do a spinoff on Rashad Tate? Absolutely. We are working on and developing um, Influence. We've been working on it now. COVID has made everything a little crazy, but I'm trying to get Influence up and running as fast as possible. Uh, let's see. How did I get into writing? Um, my mom would probably tell you I've been writing, uh, since I was a little girl, but then the word we used was lying. Um, I was definitely a precocious little kid. Um, like many of you, like many people on earth, I had kind of a difficult childhood for a lot of reasons. And I used to make up stuff in order to escape. And so I was very fortunate, like financially I was taken care of, like I would never compare myself to anyone who had what I call, you know, fundamental struggles of survival. I didn't have that. I had other struggles that were real and I had to make stuff up. And I spent a lot of time by myself. My brother, like I said, is 10 years older than I am. So he went off to college and I was, uh, I had friends of course, but I spent a lot of time in my house alone. Uh, my mom went back to graduate school when I was a little girl and, um, you know, I was by myself. And so I read a lot. Uh, and it was just natural that I became a writer. My dad wanted me to be a lawyer. That's not what worked out. Uh, I did not go to law school, but I write about lawyers now. Uh, let's see. Is it possible Dre survived? Nope. <laughs> it's not. Uh, Dre is dead. Uh, let's see. Okay. Is Tariq going to be in season two of his own show? Yes, absolutely. Uh, okay, that's a shout out to the wardrobe, absolutely. Are we gonna get a super villain on any of the other power sequels? Well, in writing, we call it the big bad, right? What's the big bad? So for years, we had a couple of big bads. We had Lobos was a big bad. We had Milan, he was a big bad. Um, we haven't actually created a big bad character yet uh, for uh, uh, Ghost because the big bad and Ghost is, okay, forgive me, you guys, this is so on the nose, but the big bad and Ghost is actually Tariq and he's the hero. He's both, okay? So he is the one who's always causing his own problems 
And he's also the hero of the story. I know that may sound totally crazy, but I, that's how I think of him. He's the big bad. Now, there are other kinds of big bads in this show. Certainly Kanan pops up to like be the like, you know, the bad conscience kind of thing. But yeah, he's the big bad. Uh, let's see. Um, is there any version where Ghost comes back as a hallucination? How like Kanan came in the last episode of Tariq? That's something that definitely we've talked about for sure. Um, okay. I really like the flashbacks of Lakeisha, Tommy, and Ghost in the last episode. You know what's interesting about that? We had a large debate about whether or not we should do that. And I feel like I never like flashbacks that are like things you've never seen before. But I love flashbacks that the audience has already seen. Because it helps you guys who are real fans. Like you're, the real fans are on this chat today, by the way. You guys are here. Um, but the real fans... They remember those moments and they go, oh, right. Yes, I remember that. So Tariq got confronted a lot of different ways. Um, and so it was really important to bring those forward. Will we see Diana's role expand in the future? Yes. Season two is really great. Uh, why did I make Raina die instead of Tariq? Um, a lot of different reasons. But uh, I back in the day, I used to work with a great writer named Gary Lennon. He had this concept which was uh, surprising yet inevitable. And that that's the great piece of storytelling is that it needs to be surprising yet inevitable. It was inevitable that someone was going to die because of Tariq's actions. But the surprising piece of it was that it was Reyna. Also with Reyna, who honestly was a good person, we didn't have as much story to tell. I'm just gonna be honest with you. This is the story that I wanted to tell um, about becoming kind of evil. Um, or knowing that evil's inside you. So, okay, let's see. Is Tariq's roommate gonna become a killer like Tommy? Keep watching. Uh, what all did Ghost was lie to Tariq. I love you, whoever you are who just said that. That is true. Do I think Tariq will get out the game eventually and succumb to the or succumb to the streets? You know, I haven't made up my mind yet. <laughs> I think Tariq is going to be, you know, what I always set out to do was this thing about, uh, is it... Is, uh, Drug dealers end up either dead or in jail. And Tariq saying, I have a third option. So I want to see what that's going to be. Uh, let's see. Will Tariq get an AKA like his father? I don't know yet. I don't know. That's, that's, that's definitely cool. Um, let's see. Okay. Let's see. Who sings the slow version of Big Rich Town? That was Jacob Banks. He's one of my favorite artists. If you are a fan of the show, you've heard him a number of times. Uh, most significantly, you've heard him... Um, when, uh, sorry, when Dre is running for his life and Tariq is giving the eulogy at Reyna's funeral and that music starts, that's also Jacob Banks. Uh, let's see. Uh, someone agrees with me about Ned Stark. Yay. Uh, okay. Someone asked who's Effie's connect is. Ooh, you want a job in the writer's room. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Breeze is dead, y'all. Uh, okay, will Carrie leave teaching to go back to prosecuting? This is interesting. This is an interesting, interesting question. I like that question. Uh, Tasha is the baddie while she's in jail. I actually agree. I think she looks beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. What's up with Drew and Jabari? I don't know what that means. Uh, I don't know what that means. I don't know how to answer that. Does Monet forgive Kane? Well, here's the thing about family. Family does you wrong and then you take them back. Family does you wrong again, and then you take them back. Family does you wrong again, and then you take them back. Then you tell family to go away. Then you need them. Then you take them back, but you still resent them. That could happen, maybe. Will Method Man switch to the good side? I love Meth, and I don't want him to see to want to see him go soon. There is no good side in power. There is either you're on Tariq's side or you're not on Tariq's side. I will tell you this, Davis McLean is always looking out for number one, and so we will see him have a really great you know, a great journey. It's going to be awesome. Uh, okay, let's see. Will Riley get killed? It's so cute. You guys love to ask me questions that are like, why would I tell you that? Why would I answer that? I would never answer that. Will Tariq go to jail? See, I love, love that. Okay, that's pretty great. Okay, let's see. Um, do I feel under uh, season six is underappreciated because of the end and the leak? <sighs> The leak destroyed the end of that season. I was so hurt and so upset. And the way that it happened and the reasons that it happened were like beyond y'all. Like the real real of what happened was so hard for me to take. Um, 
and I feel like it destroyed the end of the season. We still had good ratings. I don't think we had the ratings that we would have had. Um, I also think that because we had put together this very complicated puzzle, it took away the ability for the fans to put together the puzzle at the end, which was the whole point. Like, this is literally like um, I was cooking a meal and serving it in courses, and then the last course got burnt. And so it just sucks you know that that was really hard so yes i do feel like season six is underappreciated because of that i also feel like how do i say this i also feel that season six is underappreciated not underappreciated but in a sense viewed differently because it wasn't a happy ending and i was already planning book two and so for some people it wasn't a happy ending but at the same time i wasn't sure I personally don't feel like the happy ending would have been real. The show isn't like that. If it was a show that had happy endings, Reyna would still be alive. Um, okay. Will Bruchandria have a main character in season two? I love Bruchandria. Oh my God, Lights Can Keisha is so good. She's so good. Like, can I tell you guys a story about that? Because that's so great. I became obsessed with her. I had no idea. I've never watched, uh, I confess, I've never watched any of those love and hip hops or any like anything like that. I don't watch any of that. Um, and uh, much to the detriment of me, my, my writer's room is always like, how do you not know who this person is? I started, I fell in love with Lights and Keisha off her IG, literally off her IG. And I was like, we have to have this person in the show. Because when I was at Brown and when I was at Columbia, there were a lot of girls like that who were straight up, like they were straight up great girls who were brilliant, like brilliant women. But the way that we are portrayed all the time is that black people only come in two versions. You know what I mean? And it's like, no, they, we come in all different kinds of versions. So I wanted someone who really represented, like represented Atlanta, represented like just the way she talks and everything. And she's smart as fuck. And that's what I wanted. I'm not supposed to curse, but it is what it is. She is amazing. I love that. And there were so many girls like that. So I wanted to put that down. Um, I'm an independent filmmaker. Let's talk business. Love that. Uh, you, I read it today and it's everywhere. You know, you, uh, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't shoot. Uh, let's see. Why didn't I have an open casket for ghost? Um, I haven't done an open casket on the show. I don't think, have we, did we do, I don't, did we do an open casket for Raina? I don't remember. I don't think we've done an open casket. We didn't do an open casket for, Angela either. I don't think we've ever done an open casket. Um, that might be me and just taste because there was an open casket at my dad's funeral and I'll never get over it. So, you know, I don't know. Does Effie have drug dealing parents? Effie's mom is a mess, but I will tell you about that later. And if you guys remember um, close readers of the series, Effie's brother is dead. He was murdered. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Mary J has been one of the best in the game. No cap. Agreed. Love Mary. Barry is playing the heck out of Monet. Queen status. I love that. Would I take a fan and write them in the story? Probably not. Um, probably not. I mean, I don't know. I, I think sometimes I've cast people who were fans. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, let's see. I love the monster episode. So powerful. Shout out to Gabriella Uribe, who is one of my best friends in the world, who wrote that episode. And Bart Wenrick, who is a day one power uh, producer and who directed that. Are we getting a story on Effie? Stay tuned for season two. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, thank you for the compliments. Uh, oh, HBO show. Okay, yeah, I am. I am working on a show for HBO. I hope that they say yes and make it in 2021. It's about black cops. Um, let's see. Can we get Power Confidential back? Um, we can't, uh, we can't shoot that right now, uh, but it may come back for sure. Uh, let's see. Can you please tell why Monet doesn't know Ghost or Tommy again, please? Uh, I'm going to save the live so you can see it at the beginning. Uh, is Kane Kane and Son? No. Uh, let's see. Uh, how do you know it's time to kill off someone? That is a great question. I love your questions, you guys. You have great questions tonight. Um, Okay, so how do I know when it's time to kill somebody off? Here's what I do. I have to make the person earn their death. So I'll give you a couple examples. So uh, let's use Holly, since that's one that everybody knows. I think fans of the show know. Holly had to earn her own death. And what did she do? It wasn't because she stole the earrings. It was because she made Tommy pick between herself and Ghost. And she should have been able to read the room and know that that was not going to work out for her. So when she arranged for the assassination on Ghost, she bought her own death. I will use someone else. Uh, let's talk about 
Angela. Angela, and the key element here is in episode 510 when Paz says to her, walk away, don't help them, you can sleep on my couch, it'll all be good, just don't, you know, don't help him. And she says, no, Paz, I have to because I love Jamie. That's buying your own death. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so that's what I usually do is I wait for the character. We tell enough stories so the character has really arranged themselves in the spot that they can't get out of, and then they buy their own death. Uh, perfect example of that, Ramirez. When Ramirez said to Kane, sorry for people who haven't watched 109 yet, but sorry. Uh, when Ramirez said to Kane, you're just as stupid as Monet thought you were, I think that's the line, or as stupid as Monet says, or stupid as I thought, that's it. You got to get that gun because you you were swole. You used bass in your voice about him a while ago and you weren't ready. You weren't ready. Okay, let's see. Uh, will MJB and Method Man do a karaoke scene? No, I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> we will not do a karaoke scene. Layered complex female lead, when will we see her? I think that all my female leads have been layered and complex, but I will continue to uh, to try to to write that. You know what I'm saying? Are other characters going to cross into other people's spinoffs? For example, will Tariq be in Tommy show? That one, I don't know. But uh, yes, people will pop up back and forth. Okay. Plot twist, Tasha, the next big bat. Love that pitch. Love that pitch. Hi, Toya. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Does 2-Bit know Tariq killed Ghost? No, I don't think so. There's no way for him to know that for sure. Will we see Lauren's character expand in the future? Yes. Uh, will Drew find love? Oh, those things, there's an argument to be made that he has found love. It's just hard and complicated, like love often is. Uh, okay. Will Proctor's daughter pop up? Y'all, I have a plan for her, but it's not in Power Book 2. Uh, okay, let's see. Is Vibora going to be coming back on Tommy's story? Uh, Vibor is dead. Tommy killed him. Okay, let's see. Uh, not going to answer any of those questions. <laughs> There's a lot of questions that I can't answer. I love them, though. Let's see. Are Davis and Tubit brothers? No. That I can tell you for sure. They are not. Because then, if you guys, if they were brothers, then when they ran into each other in the jail, then when Tubit said, who are you? <laughs> Uh, Davis would have said, I'm your brother. Uh, let's see. I played Monster by Jacob Banks in, in episode 101. Yes, I did. Any advice for upcoming writers? I have a lot of advice for upcoming writers. Y'all want to hear that? Okay, so if you guys want advice for upcoming writers, a um, couple things. First thing is to think of yourself as a writer. Don't say you're an aspiring writer. Don't ever say aspiring writer. You are a writer. If you are writing, you are writing. You are a writer. A writer is a description of your soul and your being. It's not necessarily only your job. I define myself as a writer. I am a mother, a daughter, a sister, and a writer. That's what I am. I do a lot of other things too, but those are the things that I am. Okay, so that's the first thing. That will take, second of all, second of all, really important, you need five samples if you wanna work in TV. I, I say this all the time, but I really mean this, okay? You need two pilots, two pilots. You need two examples of scripts of existing shows. And I will tell you this, a lot of people wanna read your pilot. I don't wanna read your pilot. I'm not interested in that. I don't want to read your pilot. If you're a writer coming up, I want to read a spec script of an existing show. Okay. So I've hired a lot of people off of spec blackishes, uh, spec Atlantas. Uh, I know those are comedies. They're not dramas, but that's what I want to hear. Can you mimic voices? Because that's what I'm asking you to do. If I hire you for the power writers room, I don't want you to write your version of Tariq. I want you to write our version of Tariq. So it's really important that you be able to do that. And then the fifth thing is like a one act play or a feature. I don't read features because I don't have that kind of time. Um, if I, but if I do read your feature and 10 pages in, you haven't sold me, then I won't read the rest. Whereas if you write like a half hour spec, like in Atlanta, I'll finish it even if it doesn't work just to see if you land jokes or if you have that kind of thing. I, by the way, love to see a person land a joke. Having written comedy briefly and gotten fired, remember I got fired from Bernie Mac, I will just tell you guys, I think writing comedy is the hardest thing. If you can write comedy, if you can make me laugh, um, and people will tell you I'm an easy target on that. If you can make me laugh, then I'm, we're in the zone. You know what I'm saying? Y'all should have made a Power Book One first. We did. That was the original show. <sighs> what? Okay. Is this the really the final season of Ghost? What do you mean? I don't know. understand. I don't understand that. Okay. Let's see. Will Tariq become better than Ghost? That is my aim. Hopefully. He'll be a different version. 
um, for sure. Uh, I was hurt that the end leak too it took so much away. I also don't love it when people post spoilers. Can I just say that? Like, that's not cool either. Well, I have a scene in power. No, uh, I, <laughs> unlike Alfred Hitchcock, um, I don't want to do that. What I'm trying to do though is psych myself up to direct because my big dream is to direct like an action movie. You know, I want to make a hardcore, violent action movie with a female lead. That's something that I really want to do. And I want to direct that eventually. So I want to work toward that. But I don't feel the need to see myself on screen. Like, I don't love being on camera. That's not, that's not for me. I'm a behind the scenes person at heart. Uh, let's see. Is the gun from the Dropbox Tariq got the same kill, some gun that Tommy killed his father with? No. Tommy's long gotten... Uh, rid of that gun. Drew's character is poised to be like a Michael Corleone. Yes, you are absolutely following. Yes, absolutely. Somebody teach Tariq how to fight. Interesting note. Hopefully he won't have to do his own fighting. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm sick of Jabari. What is his purpose? He is doing too much. Most of the time people do too much. <laughs> uh, on our show uh okay let's see Tariq should have a long lost brother me love that uh shoot your shot uh, I think Professor Milgert is fundamentally good I don't think so but I think that's really interesting because again as I said to someone earlier today she's supposed to help these kids out here is she helping Zeke I don't think she's helping Zeke I don't think that's help do you know what I mean uh okay let's see uh oh I like the shout out for Ramona yes Will there be any up upcoming castings next year? Next year. Is Drew going to be more ruthless after getting shot? That is a great question, Rashim. It is going to change him fundamentally. There are two characters that Drew's, Drew's getting shot is going to change two characters very fundamentally. One of them is obviously Drew. He's going to change a lot. And you'll see that as you go into season two. It's also going to change Monet um, because Monet's never been in that position before. So that's going to change. Uh, let's see... Okay. Force in Chicago. Will you be looking for actors? Let's see. Effie's brother is Kanan. No. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> uh, but that's a cool idea. Uh, let's see. Effie's brother is Sean. Also, uh, will the Monet and Lorenzo relationship be affected by Kane's disloyalty? Yes. Great question. And the answer is yes. Let's talk Tommy's show, says Elizabeth Thomas. Um, what can I tell you guys about Force? Um, it's on deck. We're working on it now. Scripts are coming out. We're doing, uh, we're doing some casting. Um, it's been really cool and really fun. Uh, and, um, yeah, we've been, yeah, definitely. We've been doing, getting ready for that. I don't want to tell you guys too much about it. Uh, but I'll just say, God, what can I say? It's badass. <laughs> There's a lot of action. It's very kind of old school power in a lot of ways um, with the sex and the violence and all that stuff. So it'll be fun. Um, let's see. Could we get a female version of Tommy? Hmm. Like these ideas. Uh, okay. What challenges have we faced due to COVID-19? All of them. It's so hard to shoot, you guys. It's so hard to shoot. But it's really important that we do it. We bring this to the fans. It's been depressing enough, y'all. So... Um, but yeah, it, it's just the challenges are getting everybody tested, keeping everybody healthy, making sure that people feel safe enough to take off their masks and perform, protecting the crew, protecting the cast for sure. Um, let's see. Sax has earned his death over and over. Why is he still there? Ooh, very interesting. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, my thing is with Sax and maybe this, this is actually another thing for aspiring writers. What's nice is when you have an antagonist who is also flawed. So when you have an antagonist, like uh, one of the things that I love, you guys remember The Fugitive the movie with Tommy Lee Jones, where Harrison Ford's character says, I didn't kill my wife. And he goes, I don't care. That is so beautiful because the man is like, I'm doing my job. I don't care. I got to go get you. That's all I care about. And what I really love is this idea, I think, of like having an antagonist who is flawed, who does have you know, a complication that isn't just that he is a bad guy. That's kind of boring. Bad guys are boring. You know, just regular bad. We call that mustache twirling. Uh, let's see. Okay. 
Uh, all right. Uh, oh, this is so funny. Someone said, not funny, but someone said, I wish Ghost could have earned his death like later in the show. But that was the end of the show. He died at the end of the show. We're in a new show now. Uh, power never ends. Uh, okay. Will Paula meet Davis's wife? I've always imagined that Paula knows Davis's wife. Um, okay. Well, how do I feel about some people saying Tariq is developing too fast? Huh? I don't even understand that. It, <laughs> Tariq has developed very slowly. I want to keep in mind that Tariq, if you go back to season three, Tariq has gone through this process very slowly. Will we see Ramona again? I hope so. Let's see. What about Cash? Uh, all right. That's a good question. Uh, what is Lorenzo coming out of jail? I love your conspiracy theories. Lauren's mother was in the bank when Kanan robbed it. Kanan didn't rob a bank. He robbed a jewelry store. And if you guys remember, that jewelry store was in, I believe that jewelry store was in DC. Uh, okay. But I have to, uh, yeah, it was in DC. Okay. Let's see. Will Ott find out the truth about sex? Ott is one of my favorite characters. Um, will me and Lena Waithe work together? I think that would be dope. I hope so. I hope so. Someday, let's see. Um, trying to think of Jackie Long was a surprise. Jackie Long is a lovely person. He's really fun. He is really really fun. Okay. Anybody else? Any other questions that I haven't? Uh, hey, at Courtney Camp, you have created a power universe similar to how the MCU works. Will we eventually have two or three series in the same year? I am hoping so. I am hoping so. Let's see. Okay, what's tougher to write, ending a season or starting a season? Oh my God. Okay, so starting a season is way harder. And this is why. When you come to the end of the season, you should have basically laid out the yellow brick road of where you have to end. And so there's a question we ask in the writer's room all the time, which is what do we owe? What do we owe? What do we owe? And what I mean by what do we owe is what do we owe the audience, right? So if you think about episode 109 and what was happening in 9 that you guys just saw, so it's fresh in your memory, um, you think about just like the little pieces of like Kane's story and how he kills Ramirez. From the beginning we saw, in the very beginning when we saw Ramirez, Kane did not like him. Kane was not looking for him. So we already planted that in your mind a little bit. So like that's kind of, those are those kind of things that you, once you make those decisions up front, then they go to a natural place. The way I look at it always is what Gary said, Gary Lennon, uh, surprising and inevitable, and also dominoes. It should, the dominoes should be really easy to line up. You know what I mean? They should fall. Now it should be surprising, but oh my God, power movie. Okay, this is a great question. I wanted to do a power movie so badly. And back in the day, we couldn't do it, but I really wanted to. The thing that I really wanted to do was I wanted to do a movie that was in real time. It was two hours. Um, and it was a Ghost and Tommy idea that I had. I hope I can still pull it off someday, but it was an idea of Ghost and Tommy and something that they were doing on a specific night of the year. I really wanted to write it and I, I have my notes from it. So maybe someday I get to do it. It takes place. The thing that I want to do takes place before Lobos dies because Lobos is in it. Okay. Um, anything that I can say about Tommy's first episode? Uh, what I can say is that it picks up right after the events of 613. Okay. Steve Ott is doing way too much. Yes. Why Jabari so whipped? Um, I think he's not whipped in the traditional sense, although I don't like that phrase. I think he is just someone who is possessive. And that's what that is. Um, okay. Um, wow, somebody dissing Mary. I'm not even going to tolerate that. That's just not going to happen on my live. You don't get to talk about Mary negatively in my face. No. Uh, okay. Did Monet get her husband out of the way so she can be the queen pin? That is so, such a cool idea. It's not what we're doing, but I love that idea. That's cool. That's really cool. Uh, let's see. Okay. Has Tariq gotten to this regretting stage of killing ghost or was that a moment? I think he absolutely regrets a lot of his decisions and he also doesn't know how he could have done it a different way. If that makes sense. He doesn't know how he could have done it a different way. Okay. Let's see. Is Kane really Lorenzo's son? Yes. 
Uh, what's going to become of Yasmin? Great question. Stay tuned for season two. Oh, I love your brain too. And I love that you love the show. Uh, okay. Will the spinoffs come out before season two? I don't know. Uh, will you ever make power into an actual book? I really want to. Thank you for saying I'm amazing. You guys are amazing. Honestly, you guys have given me my whole life. So that's really, that's from the heart. Uh, okay, let's see. Will there be a role for a dark lawyer type with secrets, a killer type? I, I actually came up with that character and then we never could do it. So, uh, okay. Okay, I've already answered that, Monet and... Uh, Kane, uh, let's see. What do people learn when writing and developing a good script? How hard it is, how long it takes, <laughs> how painful it is, uh, that what makes a good idea in your mind, you know, you need to have compelling characters with a universal story, you know? And so uh, if ultimately you want to tell a story about something that happened to you and it's really specific, it's harder to tell that story well than it is to find a, um, to find a universal story within it. You know what I mean? So I'll give you guys an example. Um, when I was going through my divorce, I wasn't writing about my divorce. My ex-husband is an attorney. He is not a drug dealer. <laughs> uh, I am not a drug dealer. We have one child, not many. But when I was writing about Ghost and Tasha going through their divorce, there were certain things that were universal about those uh, things. And like, I don't mind saying, for example, that um, when Tasha and Ghost separated, we had this scene between Lakeisha and Tasha where Tasha said, I don't even know how I like to wear my hair because I wore my hair a specific way because that's what Ghost liked. And that was a real thing for me. It was a real thing about how I had wanted to look because I thought that was what my ex-husband wanted. I'm not sure that he does even what he said, but it was how I felt. And I think that that's something that can be universal. Now, of course, when Lakeisha and Tasha are talking about it, they're talking about it within the context of power in New York, in the mid, you know, 2010s, in uh, their black people, um, they are specific uh, to that. And obviously they're in life a little bit. So those are the specifics that make it power. But that conversation could be had between any two women um, and going through any kind of thing. And that's sort of what's really important. Oh my goodness, Joe. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Oh my goodness. Wait, let me see if I can find him. He just went up there. Okay. Where is he? Joe, it's so, so good to see you. Yay. Oh my goodness. So good to see you, Joe. Um, so yeah, let's see, what else? What else can I tell you guys? Okay, uh, let me see, we want Tommy. Yes, of course, uh, all right, let's see. I don't know if Joe is still on and he wants to join, but I would totally love that. Uh, let's see, okay. Did I answer the questions that were sent to me last night? Some of them I did. Okay, when am I going to cast some dope identical twins? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, all right, let's see what else. Are Breeze and Rico brothers or partners? No, no. Uh, thank you guys. Proctor was a great character. I still work with Jerry. Jerry is one of my favorite people. He's so lovely. Jerry is like one of the best people ever. Oh, can Tamika get a spinoff? You guys, I super want to figure out a way to get uh, Quincy, Tyler Bernstein into more work. Uh, I would love to do that. She's one of my favorite actors, as I'm sure some of you know. Uh, Quincy and I went to college together and I just love her so much. Sneak peek into episode 10. Um, let's see. Okay, wait, I, before I answer that, what made you come up with that scene between Kane and Monet in 106? I'm assuming that when we're talking about this, you guys were talking about uh, the scene where he goes to like kind of move his arm away from his sister and he knocks Monet over. Is that what we're talking about? If we're talking about that, the thing is, um, I guess like I shared with you guys at the beginning of this live, I had a little bit of a chaotic childhood and um, I have a specific memory of an argument that took place in my house that I was not involved in, but that I was up against the wall um, as a kid watching. And so really I'm writing in that scene a little bit about Diana 
and Drew and how helpless they are to change what's happening. Um, I think that part of what happened too was that I was trying to chart, we were really charting, um, we were really charting like how um, the relationship between Monet and Kane was disintegrating. Uh, so I think that's like sort of super important. Um, let's see. Okay. Why is killing so e hard for Tariq and so easy for a Kane or a Tommy? Once you kill one person, is it like a barrier breaking where it's not that difficult anymore? Wouldn't know personally, but my understanding is yes, that that's one of those things that's easier <clears throat> to do. Uh, hi, Soror. Am I looking up, uh, looking for up and coming black female writers for the team? Right now, our team is full, but I'm always looking for writers. Uh, let's see. Please tell us Effie's connect. No. Uh, is Jabari going to die? I'm not going to answer. What's with Tate's spinoff? We're working on it. Let's see. Oh, my goodness. Uh, bring Jackie Long back. Love that. Is there an order to the universe? Carrie and Davis, will they get screen time? Yes. Oh, good. People miss Proctor. Oh, hi, Lavelle. You're so amazing. You are super, super amazing. Uh, Tamika, don't play. Tommy is the best. Tommy is the best. I remember her for the Chappelle show. Yes, absolutely. What college we went to? Uh, we went to Brown University uh, in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, did Tamika play a character on Dave Chappelle? Yes, she did. Okay. Is Proctor going to be on Tommy's spinoff? Uh, no, Proctor's dead, y'all. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see. Can I address why the episode where Tariq, uh, got shot ghost got leaked weeks before you've never addressed that? I did address it earlier in this live. Uh, I will just say again, I, I broke my heart. It broke my heart. Really, really broke my heart. I mean, if you guys, honestly, when things leak, I just want you to know the amount of pain and hurt that I go through personally is like, because I just feel like somebody like literally ruined the thing that I was preparing for you. Um, can I make a post with a list of books mentioned this season? Yes, I can. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, people asking Joe to... Uh, to cancel Christmas on people. I love that. Do I write every episode? No, I don't write every episode. So that's actually a really great question about how it works in a TV writer's room. Um, the, uh, we break, break the whole season, we plan the whole season, and then each episode is assigned to a writer. And that writer writes something called an outline and that goes to the studio and the network and they ask us questions about that and then we write a script. And then what happens is that person, that writer on my show, they write a script and they turn it into me and then I do a pass usually on that. And what I mean by a pass is I rewrite um, that script, you know, just making voices the same, um, like so that they all sound consistent. So a Monet line sounds like a Monet line. I said what I said is a Monet line. If I say I said, if I put I said what I said in Carrie's mouth, that doesn't sound right. So you've got to kind of get the voices nice and consistent. And then I might change things uh, because each writer is thinking about his or her or their own episode. Uh, but I have to think about the whole season. So I hope that kind of helps. Um, let's see. Okay. Will I ever do a show a special on deleted scenes? I asked stars if I could do that because I have a lot of them, especially from seasons four and five of power. Uh, and I have a lot of seasons. I mean, I have a lot of uh, stuff we left on the ground, which was kind of bad planning on my part. I was overwriting scripts and we were overshooting. So I've learned a little bit about that. But so because of that, uh, we do have deleted scenes. I've never been able to get people to kind of get on board with doing a special, um, but maybe we'll ask again. Did Ghost kill Effie's brother? No. Who's writing the finale? Is it the guy who looks like future? <laughs> Andre Ferguson. No, he's not writing the finale. The finale this year was written by uh, Randy Huggins, TV's Randy Huggins, who is the uh, creator and showrunner of one of 50's other shows, uh, BMF, uh, and Aisha uh, Isiano, who is a young uh, writer, um, and they wrote it together. Okay, let's see. I think we are... I think that's the end of my question. So maybe, you know, maybe we are kind of at the end, which would be fine because it's been almost an hour. Let's see, is there any, have I ever had to fail an episode on a writer? 
No. Uh, oh, thank you, Anita. Uh, my uh, Anita, the queen of makeup for all the power series, is uh, complimenting my eyeshadow. Um, and it's a uh, combo of NARS and Anastasia. I will put it. <laughs> I will tell people what it is. Uh, let's see. If Drew just got shot, will be the major hit in episode 10? Why would I tell you? Uh, okay. Let's see. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys so, so much. Um, you're just amazing. Oh, bye, Joe. Bye, Joe. Uh, such a great dude. Such a great dude. Um, okay. I, if you guys put one more question in, why season one only 10 episodes? All the shows are only 10 episodes as of right now. If I, if you remember, if you're an old school fan, our first season of power was only eight episodes. <laughs> uh, so we are lucky to have, uh, 10. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. I love you guys. I really appreciate you. Um, you are amazing fans. And um, those of you who are aspiring writers, actors, dancers, creatives of any kind, keep at it. I know the world is crazy right now. I know your souls are depleted. I know that we have depression. We have pain. We are losing people. People of color are hurting in this country. Everybody's hurting, but people of color are hurting in a specific way. And I just want to just put it out there and say that like, I'm with you and uh, hang in there. Stay creative. Okay. Thanks. Bye.